You know, I could be pretty boring and call this my June TBR, but I am going to choose to call it my vacation reading plans. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another monthly TBR. This one for June of 2024, a.k.a. my vacation reading plans. Yes, I am leaving for vacation on Sunday. And so, uh, obviously, I'm not going to read all of these over my vacation, but I'm going to start with those. But I'm going to kind of continue to take an extended break from some chonkers. I got a little burned out. I wrote some really, really big, big books earlier this year. So I'm going to kind of ease back on some of the long series, ease back on some of the seven, 800-page books, and just kind of take it easy for a while. 500 pages or less. That's kind of what we're going. Trilogies. We're sticking to trilogies and things like that. Uh, just for just for the time being, except Stephen King, you know, he can't say anything quickly. But anyways, uh, guys, our first one obviously is The Vanished Birds. This is part of the Quilluminati. This is a book by Simon Jimenez, a book I don't know very much about. I only have the digital version. But you know what? What's really weird about this, guys? It has the same words in it. A lot of people don't know that about digital books. They refuse to acknowledge it. But uh, this was one that was brought forth by uh, what John over at Talking Story for the first in our reading group that we've got. And we would be the Quilluminati. That is myself. That is Dr. Philip Chase. You'd be mine and the doctor. Uh, obviously, Brian from Bell Tube, and, of course, John from Talking Story. So I think what we're doing is we're trying to get us, well, all of us kind of something out of our comfort zone, something that none of us have read, and then we'll kind of get to it together and have a nice little discussion. So uh, if you want to know what that one's about, I talked about it on last month's TBR. Obviously, I didn't get to it this month. Uh, things just kind of got away from me. But so it'll be the first one that I do tackle in the month of June so we can have our discussion when I get back from the Caribbean. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the newer ones all of a sudden we'll be starting in June. That's going to begin, guys, with book one in Silo by Hugh Howie. This is called Wool. You've probably heard of it. Most people are just calling it Silo now because of the Apple TV series. I started reading this about, oh, I don't know, two years ago because Moyd over at Media Death Cult, he really was had really good things to say about it. I think it was just bad timing for me. I tried to fit it in between something, and then I realized, that's not small. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is this is a collection, because uh, all these were kind of released as short stories and then kind of compiled together to make an omnibus. But uh, Wool, obviously, is the basis for the first season. Actually, the first half of Wool is the basis for the first season of Silo on Apple TV. I like the idea. I think when I started reading, I just felt like it was sort of like Walmart Fallout, but I think that there's room for, you know, more than just Fallout when you're dealing with like post-apocalyptic and what in the world's going on outside of that bunker. So uh, I thought it was a very good premise. Again, it was just bad timing for me, so I want to make sure I give it another try because I'm trying to up the horror and the sci-fi on the channel. But, but in case you don't know, guys, what is Wool and Silo about? Well, the remnants of humanity live underground in a vast silo, and in the subterranean world, rules matter. Rules keep people alive, and no rule is more strictly enforced than to never speak of going outside, for the punishment is exile and death. But when the sheriff of the silo commits the ultimate sin, the most unlikeliest of replacements takes his place. Juliet, a mechanic from the down deep, who never met a machine she couldn't fix, nor a rule she would not break. What happens when a world built on rules is handed over to someone who sees no need for them? And what happens when a world broken to its core comes up against someone who won't stop until things are set right? The world outside has grown unkind, and the view of it limited. Talk of it forbidden. But there are always those who hope, who dream. These are dangerous people. The residents who infect others with their optimism. Their punishment is simple. They are given the very thing that they profess to want. They are allowed outside. So again, guys, I thought that the uh, Apple TV series was very good. And it made me say, I want to give that book another try and see if I feel like it does kind of love it. Because the stuff that I did read, I felt like the series was very, very faithful to. So let's see uh, kind of how it goes the rest of the way. Because uh, I think it was a pretty good uh, faithful adaptation. But again, I'd only read about, I don't know, 30% of the book the first time. So we'll see. I'm very excited to uh, revisit here. And again, I like to get some new sci-fi in my bloodstream here. Obviously, continuing with the horror a little bit, one that I kind of kept putting off 
was an author that was recommended to me a ton last year. Now, this comes from a lot. When you do Stephen King videos, you get a ton of recommendations for a handful of authors. Uh, Adam, Adam Neville was one. I tried one book, and it was like, oh, uh, so I was taking a break from that, so I didn't want to go back to that. Nick Cutter's another one. He's two for two for me, so I was very tempted to put the deep here. But the third author that I get recommended a ton in my Stephen King videos, guys, is Ronald Malfi, and that's why I'll be doing Come With Me. Now, I know there are other people that said I should have started with Black Mouth, but this is the one that a viewer sent to me, so that's the one that I chose come with me uh this is one that i think that every i mean you you go to the reviews of this on goodreads and you just control f and you write the word stephen king in your search bar and that name is going to come up 400 times because a lot of people just make that comparison that he's uh, it's, it's, it's as good as stephen king stephen king fans will love it it's something that i think that a lot of people have compared his writing style to stephen king and obviously be my favorite author that's setting the bar kind of high but i'm going to go into this with open expectations. I talked to Rachel over at Shades of Orange and she said she thinks that I would like Ronald Malfi. And she's been right more often than not on what's going to land with me in horror. But uh, as far as what is come with me about, well, Aaron Decker's life changes one December morning when his wife, Allison, is killed. Haunted by her absence, Aaron goes to her belongings where he finds a receipt for a motel room in another part of the country. Piloted by grief and an increasing sense of curiosity, Aaron embarks on a journey to discover what Allison had been doing in the weeks prior to her death. Yet Aaron is unprepared to discover what dark secrets Allison kept, the death and the horror that make up the tapestry of her hidden life. And with each dark secret revealed, Aaron becomes more and more consumed by his obsession to learn the terrifying truth about the woman who had been his wife, even if it puts his own life at risk. And oh my God, guys, have you read Bag of Bones? Because that sounds very similar to Bag of Bones by Stephen King. So uh, I, I think obviously these comparisons are going to come up a lot. I can see now, okay, well, I see why the word Stephen King comes up in the search bar quite a bit when you go to the review for this, because that does sound very familiar. But again, King doesn't own the rights to the ghost story, right? And I think that... Um, Anytime you deal with a spouse uh, losing someone, being widowed, and then finding out some secrets that they might have preferred to leave un, un, you know, uncovered. Talking is really hard sometimes. A spouse that finds some secrets that they probably wish would have just stayed secret, but yet their curiosity gets the best of them. They can't stop looking. I think that's what this sounds like to me. So I like Bag of Bones. So if it's like Bag of Bones, that, that should be a fun little trip there. But I am excited to try this author for the first time because he has gotten recommended to me a whole lot. Now, guys, you know that I do love the Drist books. I really got into Drist about a year and a half ago. I finally started reading those. I love them. I love them. I've only read seven of them. It's only. I only I say only because, you know, that's like, that's like, one seventh of how many of them are. I think there's like 40 something books in that series. So it feels like when I say I've only gotten that far, but you would think that I would continue with Driss. Well, uh, Bob, yes, I am a first name basis with with Robert. Uh, <laughs> I am on a first name basis with with R. A. Salvatore. So Bob Salvatore, uh, he came on the channel and we talked. Uh, you know, gosh, year and a half ago, I guess it was a year plus. I don't know. It was a while back, but we talked. We had a really good relationship, and he kept bringing up Corona, and I was like, I don't know anything about it. He's like, you know what? Those are getting a re-release next year. Tell you what, I'll send them to you. I was like, okay, well, if he does, cool. doesn't have to. He did. He sent me the whole collection. So I'm going to read Demon Awakens because these covers are just awesome. And honestly, I want to see what his writing is like outside of established universes. Because the only thing I've read by Salvatore is Star Wars. Obviously, him playing in that sandbox and Forgotten Realms, Dungeons and Dragons. So obviously, both of these aren't his property. But he has done a great job as establishing himself as very much a mainstay in those two worlds. So I want to see how he does when he creates his own world. Now, Alan over at Library of Alan's, Andrew, he's really hyped these up for me. He said that these are some of his favorite books that he's ever read. And I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. Because, I, guys, sometimes I feel like I need some traditional fantasy. You start reading a lot of dark stuff, like I just finished The War for the Rose Throne, and that's the darkest of the dark. You know, sometimes you need some stuff that is a little maybe lighter. And I don't know necessarily that you're dealing with demons, things like that, but I mean, just like, it's not grim dark. That's what I mean. So you got some traditional fantasy. I've heard it is very, very much a really wicked magic system, kind of like Mistborn, but a little more adultish. So uh, that sounds cool. Obviously, you got monster fighting and stuff, monster hunting and stuff. I'm, I'm really, really interested. So I don't know a ton about this series, except these new this new collection is just amazing. And I said, I've got to give that a try. It's the least I can do to thank Bob for sending these to me because they are just so, so awesome. And uh, if you guys want to know now what Demon Awakens is about, in case you want to join me, and you can join me on this, a great evil has awakened in the land of Corona. A terrible demon determined to spread death and misery. 
his goblin armies and fearsome giants ravage the settlements of the frontier. And in the small village of Dendalus, their merciless attack leaves behind Pony and her friend, the youth Elbrian. Taken in by elves, Elbrian is raised to become a formidable ranger, a fateful role that will lead him into harrowing confrontation. Meanwhile, on a far-off island, a shower of gemstones will fall on black sand shores. These heaven-sent stones carry within them an incredible power, the key to all that is good in the world, all that is evil, and is up to the young monk to liberate them from the corrupt monastery that harvests them. Pray that they don't fall into the wrong, clawed, Hand. So yes, yeah, very, very vague, guys. But again, when you're dealing with traditional fantasy, all you got to give me is uh, Boy Leaves Home, Stranger Comes to Town. I mean, that's really, really easy. Give me a Dark Lord. I'm good. Give me a bunch of creepy, crawly monsters. Sure, sure, I'm in. That's as easy to sell for me, guys, as it is if you put a dragon in it. And for all I know, there's evil dragons in it. You know, so that could be a lot of fun. But again, I think that uh, Salvatore has established himself for me to where I like his writing style. I don't feel like it's going to be too much of a chore to read his books. And it, even though it's a little thicker than those dress books, like I said, I am excited to see how he builds his own world because I'm betting he's probably got pretty good, pretty good skills at doing these things. It's like I always say, I feel like no matter how you feel about Salvatore, I feel like he is fantasy royalty at this point. I feel like he is always worth your time. And I hope someone out there will join me on this because I'm very, very interested in this, even if it just means I got to get with Alan and talk about this after I am done. Now, guys, you notice that is a little shorter for the books this month. It's just because we are going on that vacation. You know, it's an eight-day trip, and you're going with a family. You don't know how much free time you're actually going to have, you know, because we are taking our kids on this one. So uh, who knows? Who knows? I just want to make sure I'm giving myself a little wiggle room and quit trying to do like I've done the last few months where I pick like six or seven books, and I've only read five of them. Not that there's a race or anything. I'm going to say I like to try to keep my schedule a little tighter. So that's why I am going to be picking back up One Piece and starting on Skypea. Now, there's eight volumes in this, but I didn't want to get all of them out. I'm just, just going to hold up this one. This is uh, the first one. Uh, so this is uh, Jaya and Skypea. This is the Sky Island arc. Now, honestly, with One Piece, it was something where I was waiting for Philip to catch up with me. And now Philip has not only already read Skypea, he's already reviewed it on his channel and gotten like 50,000 views. So, you know, hey, I am behind now. So I got to play catch up with Philip. So I will probably be doing Vanish Birds and the Skypea arc on this cruise because I feel like that's something that I can read without having to worry about. Okay, I got to get into my quiet little headspace and just, just focus a little bit because I feel like uh, obviously you're reading some manga, especially something as fun and as goofy as One Piece can be. And I don't mean that as an insult. I mean that as a compliment. I love how goofy it is. It makes me have a great time while I'm reading One Piece. And then when those big heavy moments happen, they hurt all the more. But uh, I, I have loved One Piece up to this point. And again, the only reason I took a break was to wait for Philip. And now Philip hasn't waited for me. But that's okay. That's my fault. The communication was poor on my part. So I got to try to catch up with him. And hopefully we can get together and talk about these things again. As for Sky Peel, what is, or sorry, Sky Island, Sky, Sky Island, Sky Island. I keep calling it Sky Peel. It's, it's Jaya Arc and Sky Pia Arc. And of course, that is the Sky Island saga. I keep getting these things wrong. And people always do correct me. The Straw Hats are ruthless. They do get me in the comments. But speaking of the Straw Hats, they continue on their journey with Miss All Sunday. When a ship inexplicably falls from the sky and the log post begins pointing up, they go to the far island of Jaya for information on Sky Island. There they encounter Bellamy, a pirate who is heralding a new age where pirates do not dream. Riding the knock-up stream, the crew finds themselves in the White Sea, an ocean in the sky. The Straw Hats soon discover that there is a war between the Sky People and the natives who originally inhabited a place known as the Upper Yard. So again, guys, I feel like out of context, One Piece is not going to make very much sense to you. To a lot of people, reading One Piece doesn't make a lot of sense to them, but I do enjoy One Piece, and I'm very, very anxious to get back to it because my my uh, now 12-year-old, almost my 11-year-old, he just turned 12, my 12-year-old has been begging me to read Skypea for the longest time because that was his one of his favorite arcs in the entire anime. So he's very excited for me to be reading this while we are on this trip together so he can talk to me about it. And the thing is, when I talk to him, he's a walking, talking spoiler when it comes to One Piece. Like He's already told me like the fate of several characters. I'm like, stop. What are you doing? Stop. It's just something about that generation. Spoilers don't bother them like it bothers my generation. I don't know. Why is that? I mean, is that true? I feel like that's just like a generation thing. Because I hear a lot of people that are a lot younger than me, they'll be like, oh, I got I to gotta know the spoilers so I can actually enjoy the movie. I'm like, so again, it's just like a generational thing, I guess. But I'm glad I've continued to mix up the sci-fi, the horror, the post-apocalyptic, the fantasy, and now a little bit of manga, trying to make sure I keep a good mix on things because I don't want to get back into that burnout that I had a couple months back where I felt like I just wanted to quit reading for a minute because that was that was bad. That was very bad. I think in the in looking back on it now, I think it was 
a bit of a book hangover from Shogun, which is never a bad thing. It's just, it's just going to happen when you go on a journey that epic and that long. You might have a little bit of a hangover. It might affect something else. And I think trying to jump into other thick, heavy books right after that probably wasn't the best idea. But for all of you you are asking me, what's going on? Why aren't you reading Disquiet Gods? Look, I talked to Christopher. I told him, hey, I'm just taking a break from really long books right now. He's like, man, <laughs> don't worry about it. The book will always be there. Read it when you want to. So yes, I am still going to read Disquiet Gods. I'm just like I said, it's not that I'm taking a break from anything in particular. I'm just taking a break from long, long, long sci-fi books and long, long fantasy books just for a while while I get things back on the regular. But yeah, a little bit of a shorter month this month. But again, like I said, I felt like I kept making these lists longer than I was actually able to do. And I kept having to slide something down to the next month. And I don't want to keep doing that. So I figured I'd just get it back down to like four books a month, like I was doing there for a while. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm excited to see how this uh, Simon Jimenez book works out for me, because I've heard so many people tell me they don't think I'm going to like it. So uh, I'll be curious to see how it does go, because uh, it's going to be an interesting conversation one way or the other, and I can't wait to talk to those three because that should be just a blast. You know, honestly, if all of us hate the book, it's going to be an even better conversation, really. So I can't wait to do it. But uh, that's what I got on deck for June, guys. I'd love to know what you plan to read in the month of June. Are you planning to join me on any of these? I'd love to have you join me on this Corona trip and see if it does go the way that Alan has has advertised it to me as because I just I'm, I'm very excited every time you step into a new fantasy world I think you're very excited but uh, yeah I just I, I've loved everything I've read by Salvatore at this point even when he killed Chewbacca spoiler 25 year old spoiler guys uh, you know I, I've forgiven him and I've moved past that <laughs> and now I'm ready to see what he does in his own fantasy world it's going to be very very exciting guys I can't wait to talk to you guys about so drop in the comments let me know what you're going to be doing in june guys and i will talk to you there <laughs>